Let's start with 5-MeO-DMT. What is 5-MeO-DMT? And yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's what is it? Yeah, let's start with what is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting question these days because I think a lot of people are hearing about it through different cultural references, which is exciting and frightening at the same time. You know, it's really interesting hearing, you know, Joe Rogan talk a lot about it. Mike Tyson, I feel like is the... Um, has has been probably the most prolific voice of 5-MeO recently. He's constantly talking about smoking the toad and it's, and it's been really engaging to, to see his journey. Um, but, um, 5-MeO is, a, is, is basically, as far as we know, the strongest psychedelic on the planet. It's a, it's a, it's a, we, we work with a synthetic version of 5-MeO, but it's originally found in the venom of the Sonoran desert toad. And, um, that was discovered sometime, I think in the sixties or like not, not, it's not, there's no long lineage with five MEO, like a lot of the other psychedelics where there's say a thousand years of, or thousands of years of lineage. Um, really it was discovered fairly recently, um, by an American guy. And, uh, and so it was originally found in the Sonoran desert toad. So when people talk about smoking the toad, they're talking about smoking the venom of this specific toad. Now, this toad is is effectively in very um, is is becoming extinct pretty quickly. So most people working with five meo today are now working with uh, synthetic, so like a pure molecule, lab made molecule. And um, yeah, it's it's um, it's in some ways I would categorize it in the in the same category as all the other psychedelics. In other ways, I have to sort of put it in its own category just because the experience is so different. It's so much stronger, but it's also just, um, yeah, it just doesn't have a lot of the characteristics that you, you generally think about or hear about when you think about psilocybin or, um, ayahuasca, where there's a lot of visuals and a lot of story and a lot of, you know, um, yeah, all these kind of like all the psychedelia, like five MEO feels like it goes right, right through all of that to a much more pronounced experience. So. There's, I mean, there's lots of different areas we could we could go into that. Yeah, I think that five uh, meo DMT has become like a household name in the psychedelic community. Mm. But i I want to bring us back to or bring myself back anyway yeah. to like the first time I heard about this because um, it's really bizarre, right? So what you're telling me is that um, there's a toad you know, hopping around out there in, in yeah. the, in the Sonoran desert. Yeah. And this toad has a venom, which I understand is released when, um, there is a predator or some irritant kind of nearby and just like squirts out this white substance mm -hmm. and it like, you know, paralyzes and or kills this other animal or makes them very uh, high. One of makes the them, well, do we know actually what happens to the animals that are, that no, are, affected actually, by this we animal? actually don't. It, it, it's, 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 it's so new and it's so interesting. Like basically what happened is these toads were discovered by, by, uh, Ken Nelson, um, AKA Albert most, but, uh, they've so quickly been eradicated by the popularity around them and, and just, just by people going for them. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know that how much research has actually been done on the toad and how it, what, what's happening there. So my assumption was that the psychoactive properties for the human brain were sort of idiosyncratic. It's like this weird side effect, but the, mm. the effect, this is like a defense mechanism for an animal that can be a prey to like a snake or an insect or whatever. Right. Um, and so anyway, that remains to be discovered. Yeah. Um, so this thing's hopping around, it has this defense mm -hmm. and somehow uh, Ken Nelson discovered, and if you know anything about how he discovered this, I'd love to hear it that when you smoke this substance, presumably he figured out you need to like dry it out first or something. You smoke the substance and it's like profoundly consciousness altering yeah. in a really, really interesting way. Yeah. So, so yeah, go ahead. Well, so Ken Nelson basically became fascinated with the idea of a psychedelic toad. Like he kind of had, he was, he was an interesting guy. Like he just was, he was always researching things and doing all this kind of stuff. So he was very interested in this idea he then, he was in the army for a little while in the, I think he was in the army. Uh, anyway, he found the, um, research from an Italian chemist who had been basically looking at venoms of all these different, of all the venomous toads that they could find and indexing just all the 
molecular and chemical components of their venom. So he came across the information that there was 5-MeO DMT in this toad somewhere. And it happened to be, he, this guy was living in Texas, so it wasn't too far from him. The, these toads are really generally found in the Arizona, Mexico border, kind of in that region through that, through that desert. Um, and so he became fascinated by, and, and people hadn't really been talking about 5-MeO DMT, but obviously they were familiar with DMT. And so mm -hmm. he sought this out and basically was, as far as we know, the first person to really find this toad, ex extract the, the venom and realize what, what he had, like what he had found. Okay. So what I just learned is that the, that, um, five MEO DMT exists elsewhere. It just happens to be in the Sonoran desert toad. Where else do you find five MEO DMT? As far as like, it's, it's found endogenously. So it's found in the human body It's produced in the human body, just like DMT is. I mean, I think that research is fairly novel and, and I don't know that we're super clear on what's going on there, but there is some trace, trace amounts of it in the body. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also found in a few other plants, um, but in very low, uh, low amounts. So it, there's no plant you could go pick and smoke and find mm -hmm. five, M, like ha have enough five MEO in it. Um, one of the plants is called, uh, Varola resin, I believe. What's interesting is that that plant, uh, the, the, one of the plants with 5-MeO is very prevalent in the areas around where the origins of like the Judeo um, Judeo Christian religions were formed. Like there was this plant was abundant in those areas. So, who knows what that means? It's just interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, through this really interesting and as yet to be elucidated history, yeah, this compound finds its way into the hands of this guy. Um, and, um, he publishes this, yeah. uh, manual or something. Can you tell us the story of that thing? Well, yeah. So I, I have a, I have like a reprint of it. So in the 80, I think it was 1980, uh, early 1980s. So just after I was born, I guess, um, he, yeah, he, he published this in 1983. So he published this little manual. This is a reprint that was done by Hamilton Morris, uh, uh Morrison or Morris. I can't remember. Morris. Yeah, ha Hamilton Morris from uh, um, basically to help support Ken Nelson because he had he had found Ken Nelson just before he died and was to raise some money for him and and basically to put this information out in the world. So he published this pamphlet. It has like all of the it has all these drawings of how to uh, how to milk the toad and how to find them and all this information and uh, these these illustrations that his friend had done about what the experience was like and. So anyway, he published this, but this was in the eighties. So that was the first information and he was handing it out at, you know, I don't know where he was handing it out, but he would print a bunch of these hand, print them himself and then go hand them out at conferences or fairs and things like that. And, and that's how this, this started to become on the radar. Um, and that was really like, like to say the early eighties. And what's interesting is that we'd already gone through the, the, the prohibition of most psychedelics in the U S this was discovered kind of post that prohibition and a lot of folks, um, a lot of the kind of old timers that were doing research down in California and all this kind of stuff, they started to be aware of 5-MeO, but they agreed to keep it as underground as possible because of what had already happened, you know, like with LSD and hmm. um, other, other substances. So they, nick they, they codenamed it Jaguar and hmm. they, they all agreed that they wouldn't publish anything about it. Um, and, so, so what's interesting is, is 5-MeO DMT remained off the radar of the DEA until the two, until 2007 when it was, I think it was 2007 when it was then regulated in the US. It's still unregulated in Canada. Um, again, largely because it's just flown under the radar mm. um, and been fairly elusive to everybody. Hey, thanks for checking out that clip of the Mindspace podcast. You can get the full episode here on YouTube or check it out on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks and be well.